Hey guys, Zarok here, and uh, today I'm bringing you guys the third episode of the Inform 7 tutorial. We're going to be going over two things today that is going to help you substantially in your interactive fiction creating. Um, I used both of these for The Beast Within way too much, and I'm proud of it because it made the game work. What we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be looking at variables, and we're also going to be looking at a website that can help you with any of your Inform problems. And by any, I mean literally any. I think every problem but one I had, they found the answer to. So, they are pretty good. So let's get into the code first, and the variables, because the variables will help you with pretty much anything. If you want to do anything, variables are your way to go. Now, as a beginner coder, uh, I know I definitely felt this when I first heard that variables were going to be a big part of Inform 7. Um, you start panicking, especially if you've learned or like tried to learn something like Python, where you see you know if 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 else elifs or you know going down the page. It is not that hard. It is very much very basic and it works. All right, that's the key thing. You don't have to keep doing these if statements. It works. All right. Yes, you do have to do a if statement, but nothing else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this archer here. You can see that he's in the bedroom. If I hit go, just to show you guys, I haven't messed with the code at all. all right, you can see a pile of clothes, Lupus, Goro, Ulfa, Zagraf, and the Archer. And if we go south into the kitchen, still a boring kitchen. If I go back north, everything's still the same. I have not touched anything since the last video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this Archer, instead of being in the bedroom, when we pick up these pile of clothes, he's going to be in the kitchen. He's just gonna move to the kitchen, simple. Now, this can be very easy, uh, ni nice to do, like for example, um, in my game, in the base for Vin, the werewolf is actually moving with you. Now, obviously that's code that no one will see, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the game because you can't go to the bushes, but the werewolf actually follows with you depending on where you are in the um, forest, and then he moves into the forest um, path where you get uh, attacked so that's one instance you know if you just want someone to move around depending on what you're doing that's a nice instance especially if you're doing something like a murder mystery or a horror or something like that you know you pick something up and suddenly they don't be existing in that room so what we're going to do is going to make a variable now the first thing that we're going to do and this should be for any code in any language regardless if you're doing something like variables or making items or whatnot and you've got them all in one chunk you want to make a comment now in this it is very key because with inform 7 your code will just continue down the page it's not like little packets and files like a javascript file you put into unity it is just one long 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 piece of code and when you're scrolling up and down it is very hard to find where you want to go so you want to do these comments because they're in green so you can automatically see right that's that bit so we're going to call this one variables now i'm actually going to type it properly and the way you do it is just by putting these um brackets um square brackets name square brackets if you think right i don't want that piece of code but i want to keep it exact same thing just bracket them so that's how you make comments on Inform 7. That will help you a ton. So we're going to make a variable. Now what we're going to call it is because we've got the Archer, we're going to call it Archer Move. Now it can be anything. Uh, one thing I haven't tried um, and tested, so I don't know how the outcome will be, is making a variable with some, uh, like a name of something. So like saying that Lupus is a variable. I think it will probably clash because Lupus is also an animal. So I'd suggest you try not to use the same names as you have items, animals, rooms. Um, try and avoid them. If you're wanting a description, um, want a variable about Lupus, maybe have it, you know, Lupus action, for example. Um, just add something. So as you can see here, Archer move because we're moving the Archer. Now we want a is a truth state that varies this basically is defining that it is a variable it's a boolean it can be true or it can be false so we also need to define whether it is true or false 
So archer move is false. This means that at the moment, archer move is false, the variable is false. It can be true at some point, I guess, but it's not doing anything. We've got nothing else to it. So if we want it that we pick up the pile of clothes and that the archer moves, we want after taking the pile of clothes, after you doing the action, then you want to put a colon. Uh, this colon states that you're doing a statement, you're doing a variable. Um, if archer move is false, again, you're continuing on, so you need that colon. Um, now the archer is in kitchen. This one is a semicolon because you're stating something, you're not um, making a variable, you're stating something. Now archer move is true. Again, that one's semicolon because again, you're just stating something, you're changing the variable from false to true, and this just stops the loop. And then continue the action. Now this continue the action here is a pain in the ass because if you forget it, it can basically, it doesn't destroy your game, but it makes it a bit weird. Um, especially if you're going in rooms. If you have like, after going to said room, play this sound or do this or do that, or now this person's here, um, and you don't have continue the action, the room description will not come up. So you need to make sure you put continue the action after you do it, if you are continuing the action. If you're not, make sure you put stop the action. Because otherwise it will continue doing the action. So if you want, if you're having it that if someone pulls something down, um, instead someone says why are you doing that, you and you don't want them to pull the item down, then have stop the action. Don't actually allow them to pull the item down because otherwise you're just breaking your game. So that's all there is to it. Now what I could do is I then if I wanted to. Um, Archer to go back, we could have, you know, if Archer move is true, blah, 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 blah. That's what we could do. But for now, that's all we're going to have. So if I go back and hit go again, you can see obviously the Archer is still in the bedroom. If we go south, he's not there because we haven't picked up the pile of clothes. So if we go back north and uh, we take the pile of clothes. And then we hit look. I don't know why I did slash. So you do look. He is not there. If we go south, he is there. Variables. Easy. They are very, very easy. Very, very helpful. Variables will save your life. Now, one thing I also did, I said about the comments, say what this is. Because when you're reading it, you know, if obviously archer move, I can see that it's moving the archer. But I had ones like um, WW lock and WWA lock. Uh, one of them to be locking a room, one of them to be locking the rooms after the wealth attack. Well, I would never remember which was which, so always comment, um, always put a comment next to the variable about what it does. So, moves Archer to kitchen after pile of clothes pick up. Simple. It's very easy, very quick, and it will help you a lot with remembering what your code is. So... You made variables, you can really, really crack on with your game now because variables will help you a ton. But what if you get stuck? What if you've gone through this documentation, you've gone on Google, you can't find what you're looking for, especially as Inform 7 is exactly the most popular in the world. Uh, you know, it's not Unity, it's not used by the masses. Uh, what do you do? Do you just sit there and cry and say, well, that's it then, I can't do this, you know, game over? Do you continue and try and persevere and just try and try and try until it fixes itself? Well, how about you do the latter while getting help? And see, this is where this comes in. We go on the internet here. We're on intfiction.org. Now, this actually took me three weeks to find. And when I found it, I abused it. And I mean, I absolutely abused it. So this is an interactive fiction website. Um, there, I don't actually know how much they're building into this i don't know whether to stop building it now uh but basically you got a forum site here now i think the general thing on the end of uh on in fixtures you're supposed to be able to share your games as far as away you can i mean i shared uh the beast within's public beta 
uh, into here, into the announcements and beta testing. But one thing that you want to do, um, if you get stuck, is you want to come down to authoring, and you want to go to Inform Seven, uh, Inform Six, and Inform Seven de development. Now, Inform Six is actually the language that Inform Seven uses, but Inform Seven is the program. Some people still use Inform Six. Some people use Inform Seven. It doesn't really matter. You don't even have to um, announce what you do. And as you can see, there is tons and tons and tons. There is 5,273 topics, including some of my own, um, here. You make an account and you can post a topic yourself. Now, when you make an account, uh, you have to wait, I think, four to five hours for your post to be verified by the moderators and then uploaded. Uh, it took me like three or four hours. And then within the hour, I had four responses to what I had. So if I log in to my thing real quick, I just want to see, okay, it is hidden, good. Um, so I wasn't sure if I was hidden. So if I, nope, that isn't my password. What did I have mine in? Was it that? It was that, right. I could remember my login. So if I go on my post here, you can see I have tons of posts. So I have loads of questions, doors and displaying topics, tables, sounds not playing, delaying sound effects, can't lock a door, making actions, needing nouns, two small questions, sound start for glitching, backdrop help, uh, beta testing, and room description variable changing. That's what I had uh, throughout my game. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of posts. Now you'll notice that there is some recurring people. Uh, Hanano, uh, Draconis, there's also uh, Matt W, I believe his name is. Uh, I think there's a couple of others as well that always post back. Um, so yeah, you see Hanano, uh, Matt W, Draconis. These three people are saviors and I cannot thank them enough. They really helped me. Uh, Draconis, uh, which is uh, David Stelzer, I think his name is. Um, he actually has created a music extension. I don't know whether he's done any more extensions. But he helped create or created or something like that. Um, a music extension which I ended up using. Which allowed me to play multiple sounds, etc, etc. We'll get into extensions in another day. But these guys are stupidly helpful. And they can help you on anything. They can help you in code. They can give you uh, reviews and your beta testing. Uh, Hanano and someone named Sohu. Uh, absolutely ripped my game to shit pretty much um, but it made my game better it gave me feedback to you know uh, help in my college course so I can't really fault them they really helped me so make sure you use this website infiction.org you know, sign up's really really easy you make your first post you wait a couple of hours for it to be um, accepted after that you can make as many posts as you want uh, obviously don't spam um, but you can make as many posts as you want they recommend you to post your code as well. Uh, I believe this uses BB code, so you can like have the uh, like uh, square bracket code, put your code in square bracket uh, slash code to close it. Uh, so these guys really really helpful. This website saved me a ton. So that's all we're gonna go in for in this video. So variables and in fiction. Um, you'll probably hear me say a lot about this website. It is absolutely amazing. So next episode, I'm not sure what we're going to go through. Uh, probably going to go through tables, uh, speech tables mostly. Uh, I think they're the only ones I've really done other than reading tables, which we'll probably touch on to as well, uh, even though I have touched on to it a little bit. So anyway, guys, this one's Zark. If you guys did enjoy, leave a like down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.